So before we jump in and build everything, let's talk about how Django actually works. We have this thing of installed apps. So these are blocks of code or just whole modules of code that perform some sort of function, right? So in the case of admin, there's something called the Django admin, which we'll jump into in a second, and then something called auth. So let's go in back into our terminal. Let's make sure our project is activated and we are in the source folder. Um, and if you had some questions about like, hey, there's some new additional things in my screen that we didn't do, such as like this git ignore, you can, you can completely ignore that. It has to do with our GitHub repository that we put our code through. Um, but let's go back into our project. So we're back into our project here and I wanna make sure I create a super user. So I'm gonna do python manage.py create super user. And this super user is the person who's gonna have or person or people or basically the username that's gonna have control over the backend. It's very, very similar to like your own computer's user like super user. So in our case, we're gonna do CFE, our email address, hello at teamcfe.com. That is a real email address, but we prefer you ask questions in the comments below so other people can benefit as well. Password, I'm just gonna say um, learn code one, two, three, learn code one, two, three. Hopefully that password works, it does. If you use the password that isn't very good, that's not a great password, but if you used a really bad password such as one, two, three, like that, or simply password, it has those password um, validators that will prevent you from doing that, which is cool. So let's actually take a look at our, Py our actual Django project now. So we'll do python manage.py run server. I'll talk about what's going on here in a second, but let's go ahead and copy this thing that looks like a URL and bring it into Chrome and we'll paste it in there. Congratulations, you've created your first Django Power page. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Either way, our project is actually running and working. If I go to the URL slash admin, it's prompting me to log in to the Django admin. Um, mine, in my case, had the username pre-filled in, but I wanna make sure that I have the right password, which was learn code 123. And now I see that I have my Django ad administration there. So this is actually how I can directly go into sort of the database. Now it's not going, completely into the database because it doesn't have everything in there because we can control what actually shows up in the admin itself. But what's nice about the admin is I can actually just come in here and add users if I'd like. We're not gonna really cover adding the user stuff that's actually covered in another TriJango series. So definitely check out TriJango 1.8 and TriJango 1.9 to learn more about that. But, or also many of our other projects on joincv.com. Now, the thing here is, this is where we can do some admin sort of stuff. We can come in here, we can save data, we can change data. We can do all of these different things that are really useful for us. That is an app itself. So the main reason that we went in there is to talk about apps. So everything in the code that's in django.contrib.admin actually runs what's going on here. So if I copied this and pasted it into Google and just said code, just wrote code after it, there's a good chance the GitHub code is gonna come up. If I click on that, it takes me to the Django admin code. So all of this code right here actually controls how the admin works. In fact, this is where all of the Django code lives anyway. So it's on GitHub and it has a lot of stars. But anyways, so that is where the code is. So you can actually go in through this code and see what these things are. You can read about it and try and learn and make sense of it um, of course, it's a little bit more advanced as to where you're probably at right now, but there is a lot of stuff going on here that you can really learn to improve your own code. So since it has its own app, let's actually create our app that is going to be similar to these apps. They're not gonna be the same, but it will be similar. So let's go ahead and close out our server with control C. Oh yeah, I didn't mention what the server does. So if I do run server, this command emulates a production server. That is, it emulates what it'd be like to have your website on a real server. We can talk about the servers in length, but basically a server is another computer stored somewhere that anyone in the world can access through these URLs, right? These URLs are what actually come back from that server. The server does a lot of things that a normal computer would. That's essentially what it does. But if we control, uh, if we cancel out our development server and go back into Chrome and try and refresh into our Django admin, 
it says the site can't be reached. The reason being we turned our development server off. So if you ever saw a site down or it says the site can't be reached, that's because it's, there's a good chance that the server is down, the server is not working. So that's kind of the basics of it. Um, if you have more questions on the on server stuff, please ask those questions at joincfe.com slash knock so we can actually talk about them a little bit more there. Okay, so now what we wanna do is actually start our first app. And this app is gonna handle our actual URLs. So it's gonna handle our redirects. And I there's a few names as to what I can call it. Um, like I could try and call it URLs, but that's probably not a good name because we have a module in here called URLs. So we wanna think of something that's gonna be the actual app or what the app is going to do. So I'm gonna call it python manage.py and I'll call it shortener, shortener. And that, <laughs> there's a little mistake here. We wanna do python manage.py and that is start app, not start project this time, so it's start app now, shortener. So a shortener is the app that's actually gonna control everything that we want it to do. So as far as an app is concerned, what is an app? It's not like an app like in, in terms of like a, a mobile device or something like that. It's an app that's a block of code, a module, like a, a whole block of Python code that does something. It controls something and it does one thing ideally really, really well. Now in the case of ours, it's gonna handle all of our URL shortening. It's gonna do everything related to that specifically. So that is just what that app's gonna do. So now what we wanna do is actually create a model for it. That's something we'll do in the next one so we can actually store our data for our shortener in the backend. If you have any questions on what we've done so far, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.